Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Music Nerd here, back with another tier list. This time, I'm going to be going over the Grammy category of Best Rap Song Collaboration, or these days, they changed it to Best Melodic Rap Performance. Basically, this was a category that celebrated both the hip-hop and R&B genre, and we'll go over to the Best Rap R&B Collaboration. So we're going to be going over some of the Grammy winners and where they fit on this tier list. But before I get into it, if you want to support the channel and if you enjoy the content of this channel, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button down below if you're a return subscriber. Hit the notification bell to be alerted for new content. Uh, a lot of these tier lists are going to be coming on the way, so you don't want to miss it. Alright, so on with the tier list. The first song to win in this category back in 2002. Eve featuring Gwen Stefani's Let Me Blow Your Mind. This was Eve's biggest hit single. And this came off of her second album. And at a time when she was breaking away from the whole Rough Riders label. And also for Gwen Stefani, it was really the first time that we really saw her, you know, delve into these R&B pop waters. You know, she would later continue on this trend when she would collaborate with Pharrell on her debut album, Love Angel, Music Baby, and doing songs like Hollaback Girl and The Great Escape. Prior to this, Quinn Stefani was only known for being in No Doubt, which, of course, had a huge crossover appeal, but they were still kind of known in relatively, you know, ska and punk circles. So it was, a, it was an interesting collaboration, and I think they both are solid here. I'm going to put this in the... The beat here. I know that this song did a lot for Eve, and I think that at this time in hip hop, when I was a kid, you know, you had people like Missy Elliott, Lil Kim, Trina, Foxy Brown, all portraying different aspects of femininity, and Eve was sort of like she was the tough girl, but she was also very sensitive, and you know, the girl that you can hang out with. All right, so the next song, Nelly's. Featuring Kelly Rowan, Dilemma. This was a huge song for Nelly coming off of the Hot in Here song, or Hot in Her, if you want to pronounce it. Nellyville, 2002, huge album. Um, Nelly was everywhere that year. Believe me, he was the biggest star in pop music that year. And really, you know, Hot in Here was sort of like the club party single for Nelly, but then he tried to switch things up a bit with a ballad and you know, I think Nelly and you know, doesn't get enough credit for being the guy that pioneered that half rapping, half singing that we hear so many rappers do today, especially with Drake. I mean, Nelly without a doubt is a huge influence on Drake. Kelly Rowan coming in for the hook. You know, it's a sweet single. Um you know, it's not it's very sappy, but, you know, pretty solid for Nelly standards. Beyonce featuring Jay-Z, Crazy in Love. This was the first song off of, you know, that kind of started Beyonce's solo career. Of course, she was still in Destiny's Child, but, uh, you know, she wanted to break out onto her own. And, you know, you can ask for a better way to debut as a solo artist, I mean, this let the world know that Beyonce, I mean, you look at back at the music video, this is a, just a sledgehammer of a, of a single, just like the production's on point, it, it's, a, it's an amazing single, and an amazing way to kick off Beyonce's career, I'm going to put this in the S tier, um, I think it's a phenomenal song, still one of Beyonce's best singles, um, and really, you know, Jay-Z returning the favor because she was on his Bonnie and Clyde song and he did the rap for the song and in a sense really started that partnership professionally and personally. Next song, Usher and his song, Yeah, featuring Little John and Ludacris. Another single that was, man... You know, Usher, at this point, had already had a couple of number one hit singles. You know, was, you know, 
a top R&B star in his own right, but this song in the Confessions album that came out in 2004 put him on a whole nother level. You know, I don't want to compare him to Michael Jackson in the Thrill era, but Usher's 2004, I put that year against anybody's year. I mean, just number one hit after number one hit after number one hit. He was on fire during this whole time. And yeah, what's the start of that? Now, of course, this was also peak Little John when the crunk air was raining over hip hop. Peak Ludacris, too, coming off of that song Stand Up. So this was really, you know, Atlanta's finest all coming together. Three different energies, three different personalities coming together for just an incredible song. Now, for me, I'm going to put this. In the A tier, one of Usher's biggest singles of his career. Alright, so the next song is Jay-Z's featuring Linkin Park's is Numb slash Encore. And this was off the Collision Course album in which uh, Jay-Z would rap over old Linkin Park tracks. And, you know, that's an album that I remember buying as a kid and, and I quite enjoyed it. I wasn't, yeah, I was somewhat of a Linkin Park fan. And I think it was I think it was tastefully done because Linkin Park does have some hip hop elements, so it wasn't completely out of the box. It's not like you know Metallica and Lou Reed with their collaboration, but this one was you know cr- people Jay Z crossing over to the rock audience, Linkin Park kind of crossing over to the hip hop audience, and the song here Numb and Encore, you know, I think worked pretty well. I'm gonna put it in. You know, the B category. Um, you know, it was an experiment that I think that, you know, Jay-Z was trying to diversify his audience. And, yeah, I mean, if you haven't checked out this album, it's not bad, actually. It's actually, um, you know, Linkin Park at this time, one of the biggest rock groups. Jay-Z, one of the biggest hip-hop artists. So, hey, why not? Next song is Justin Timberlake's my Love featuring T.I. This is, I think, with T.I.'s first Grammy win um, ever. So, props to T.I. for that. I think T.I., at this time, you know, with that, uh, you know, hit song, uh, What They Know About That, uh, was over everywhere on the radio. So, you know, T.I., before he collaborated with... Robin Dick collaborated with another uh, white R&B artist in JT. And, of course, Timberland is on the production. Not one of my favorites from that album. Um, of course, it had that spacey Timberland production. Sexy Back, you know, was the lead single. And My Love, you know, kind of sounds similar to Sexy Buck, Sexy Back, but um, just a little bit more slowed down. But to me, it's, it's not a song that I will put on when I'm listening to Justin Timberlake. So I, I think it's an average song I put in the C category. All right, the next song is Rihanna's featuring Jay-Z's Umbrella. So, yeah, Jay-Z won quite a bit in this category. Really, the song that put Rihanna on another level and showcased that she was a bona fide pop star. Um, I would put it... In the B category, Jay-Z coming on here, you know, really, it's great to see because Jay-Z kind of put Rihanna on the map and put her on Rock Nation, and now for it to come full circle, and now that he's featuring on her song that became a big hit, uh, yeah, I thought it was a, it was a great thing. So the next song we're going to talk about is Estelle's American Boy featuring Kanye West. I wonder what ever happened to Estelle. This was at a time when a lot of British singers were crossing over. You know, people like Amy Winehouse, rest in peace, Adele, Duffy, you know, Lily Allen. You know, a lot of people from across the pond were just breaking over to America with this retro R&B sound. And Estelle was one of those. Although her career didn't come to the heights that this song... I mean, I guess you can consider her a one-hit wonder, but... It's still a pretty decent song for its time, and I think that it uses this disco, funk, electronic elements uh, 
very tastefully. And you know, Kanye coming in with a nice verse. You know, I think it's a it's a fine single, but you know, I put it maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give I'll put in the B tier, like B minus. Um, only because, you know, I love disco funk and uh anything that kind of harkens back to that era is uh is the easy stuff for me. Kind of a shame that we didn't get more Estelle, but at least she has this Grammy Award to look on back to. Also another one, Leon Leona Lewis. Whatever happened to her? Um she came up with Bleeding Love and Nobody ever heard from her again. It's crazy. Shout out to Leon Lewis, wherever you are. The next three songs that won this category, Run This Town. Of course, uh, Jay-Z featuring Kanye West, Rihanna. And then the next year, Empire State of Mind. And the next year, after All the Lights. I already covered those songs in my best rap song tier list. So if you want to know what I thought, those songs placed on the tier list, check out that video. No Church in the Wild. Jay Z and Kanye and Frank Ocean, what a, what a, what a three-headed monster that is! And this was the first song that kicks off "Watch the Throne." For a song of this nature, um, initially, I didn't love it like a lot of people did. I think Frank does a great song singing on the hook. <laughs> you know, I just feel like there were better songs on that album, and I think it's. I think it's a it's an okay single. Um, yeah, I'm not really too high on it like a lot of people are. I put in the the C category. Um, I don't know. I, I just I think uh, Jay Z and Kanye pull off decent verses, but it wasn't like oh my god, like it's a it's a table setter. It's it's not something that um, uh, I would go back to if I were trying to uh, revisit this era. Of you know, watch the throne, holy grail, Jay Z featuring Justin Timberlake. Um, in a sense, I mean, <laughs> it, it's kind of the same thing as uh, No Church in the Wild. You got somebody singing on the hook for a minute, it's a slow burn, and then Jay Z comes in and wraps this thing. I would have thought Suit and Tie was probably gonna win this category, uh, and I think it's the better song of the two. Um, to me, I, 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 this was a period in uh, Jay-Z's career where I was not really a fan. I thought that his lyrics were kind of lacking. Um, it really wasn't until 4 4, four that, you know, his lyricism game picked up again. Magna Car, Holy Grail. I know it has his fans, but I, it's one of my least favorite Jay-Z albums. And uh, with this song, you know, Jay-Z just talking about how he's fearing being irrelevant and fear of uh, losing everything, losing beyond. I mean, it's just, when you really think about it, it's really kind of silly. You know, Jay-Z has had nothing but success. I mean, he maybe had a, a f maybe a couple of setbacks, but for the most part, really, you know, did not falter in any way. Every album that he pretty much has had in his career has been multi-platinum, successful. Justin Timberlake, too, um, in his music career, has been very successful. So, I don't know, it just felt from, coming from these guys, the message kind of fell flat for me. And, and the production is kind of flat, to be honest. You know, I'd put it in the C category. Also, this song sampled Smells Like Teen Spirit, but... I just hated the way that they did that. Making it electronic and then slowing it down. It, it was like, what the fuck was that? It just sounded like ass. The Monster, Eminem featuring Rihanna, um, which is basically <laughs> Love the Way You Lie, part two. And um, I'm not a fan of Eminem using pop singers to get a number one hit, which is exactly what this thing, I mean, Eminem was like saying, hey, you know, Rihanna, love the way you lie, was such a big success, and it got me into a bigger audience, so we're just going to do the same thing here, and, you know, when you have a song called The Monster, you're expecting some, like, you know, 
evil kind of dark sounded production but here it's just so flat and it's just so way too poppy way too um sanitized here uh i put in the d category just not a memorable song these walls kendrick lamar featuring Bilal, anna wise um off the pimp butterfly i think it's a it's a well done song well done collaboration i love Bilal on the hook um we all know that he has a very unique voice and and a wise on the backup vocals it sounds like a song that you can play at a barbecue but uh, when you really look at the lyrics it's um it's not barbecue friendly shall we say but i digress pretty good song one of the standouts from this album it kind of reminds me of like an 80s r&b like slow jam kind of atmosphere, something that would be in a Luther Vandross or Quiet Storm type of song. So, and I didn't think Kendrick would be good over this type of production, but he kills it. All right, so we're going to go from one Kendrick song to another. Actually, no, Hotline Bling was a song, but once again, Ray talked about that on my best rap song, Tear List. Uh, so you want to know my opinion on that song, check out that video. So we're going to be going here to Loyalty, Kendrick featuring Rihanna. The partnership that we didn't know that uh, we wanted. This is just um, a badass song, samples the 24K Magic, you know, that kind of chipmunk soul thing that was pioneered by Kanye. You know, Kendrick once again... You know, trying to do that R&B sound. But I think him and Rihanna have great chemistry. In this song, she's kind of like... She's not rapping, but she, you know, she's she's definitely putting on that like hip-hop energy. And yeah, you know, Kendrick here um, talking basically to his uh, lover. Like, hey, you know, when things are bad, you know, do you have my back? And, you know, it's a very cute track. You know, it's one of those songs about true love that isn't sappy so i'm gonna put it in the b category so next song i'm gonna be talking about childish gambinos this is america don glover you know him you love him uh this song was his first number one song of course when the song came out it was all everybody would talk about the video especially was um very controversial and you know here's the thing you know when you take the video out of it and you listen to the song you may think well, what the hell is he talking about and i thought it was very smart for gambino to release the song in the video at the same time because now you think about the song and it's like oh okay that's that's what he was talking about because you know Really here, it's very minimalist. You know, Gambino, not really lyrical here. I mean, he's doing ad-libs and, you know, of course, what else should be mentioned? I love the way that he uses uh, guys like um, Ray Shrimmer, 21 Savage. Um, you know, using these guys, using their voices, kind of similar to what Kanye would, did with All the Lights using these different voices with these ad-libs, but like, you know, putting just the right amount of, uh, you know, it's like making a meal. It's like putting the right, you know, right amount of pepper here, right amount of, you know, spices here. And it, it creates, um, it gives the song volume. Yeah, I think for this song to come out, um, you know, right after Awaken My Love and to not even be on the album, like, it was just straight, hey, I'm just going to release this track. Um, was very bold of Gambino, you know, and it paid off. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic song. Um, I put in the S tier. Uh, I think it's, actually, you know what? I put in the A tier. You know, it's a song that you kind of have to think about. You know, obviously, it's it's... And you look at the video too, there's a lot of things that it's not just service level, right? There's obviously more that's going on 
that you have to break down. And you know, I love that about Gambino that he he always does things different. Uh, he never, you know, I know a lot of people want him to break down and say, well, what does this mean? What did this mean when you say it like this? And it's like, and he was like, hey, I'm not. It's your interpretation. It is what you make out of it. I respect that. I respect when artists do stuff like that. Songs like this and Kendrick Lamar's All Right, you know, they're never going to lose their potency because, you know, of what's going on in the news and state of the world. Songs like this are always for our generation, the younger generation, you know, these type of songs. And I'm not comparing it, don't go crazy, but like songs like Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. And, um, you know, Curtis Mayfield's, you know, people get ready, like, for the hip-hop generation, like, these are the songs that are going to resonate with us. And although Scambino's not talking about it explicitly, you know, you get the message. You get what he's trying to go for. It's a very unique type of song. It's mixing Afrobeat with trap music. I mean, fucking Gambino. Higher. DJ Khaled featuring John Legend and the late great Nipsey Hussle. This was off of his Father of Assad album. Now, although the album um, got mixed reviews and I wasn't too much of a fan of the album, obviously I think this song, and a lot of people can agree that this song was one of the best songs on the album. You know, no pun intended, the high point on this album. Um, Nipsey Hussle, of course, you know, well-deserved Grammy here, um, puts on, you know, he's, he's, he's the star of the show here, puts on a phenomenal verse, you know, John Legend coming on here, you know, adding a beautiful touch with his vocals, um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful song, and, uh, you know, you listen to it, and you just can't help but think about Nipsey, and, and, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a bit of a tearjerker, I'm gonna put it in the A tier, and, That'll be it. That is my tier list for the best melodic rap collaboration, performance, whatever, whatever, um, in this category. But tell me what you think. Leave a comment below. What do you think about this tier list? You know, if you had to make your own tier list, what would you put in, you know, what songs would you put in which category? You know, what some of your favorite, least favorite songs here? YouTube recommends these two other videos to check out. I'm going to be coming back. With another tier list. Uh, will be the last of the hip hop category. It will be. I believe best rap solo performance. So look out for that very soon. As always. Until next time. Peace.